Hello again, and this is Justin at The Tech Train here, and welcome to the second lesson in this tutorial series looking at how to teach online effectively. I put this tutorial series together especially since in 2020, as I'm recording this, teachers are having to teach students remotely because uh, schools are closed because of the coronavirus. And it is a challenge to try to deliver lessons effectively to students and to motivate and engage those students. So this tutorial, uh, tutorial series has 10 different ways uh, in which you can try to uh, provide a, a rounder, more effective, more fun online distance teaching experience. So I'm going to be looking at a range of tools, techniques, and websites that you can use. In the first of this uh, series, I looked at how you could add narration to a PowerPoint file so that you could deliver that remotely. In today's lesson, what I want to look at is how to take that narrated PowerPoint file and turn it into a high definition video so that you can either deliver that as a video file to your students, uh, perhaps putting it up on, uh, on Google Classroom, or even uploading it to YouTube so that you could then give them the link and they can have a look at the video online there. It's actually quite straightforward, although there is an obvious issue uh, that some people do find. So I'm going to show you a couple of different methods, uh, one of which will work if you have the newest version of PowerPoint, but I'll also show you an alternative method which will work if you have a much older version of PowerPoint. And I'll also start off by showing you a way I wouldn't recommend. So first of all, I have here the exact same presentation that I put together in the last lesson, lesson one. So this already has narration recorded and the timings of the slide are also included. If you haven't seen the first lesson, it might be a good idea to go and have a little look at that um, and just check that out. Um, I'll put a link probably somewhere here, somewhere on there just to, to show you where that is. Um, okay, so let's have a little look then at what we do. First of all, I'm going to show you what we don't do. So I would not go to File, Save As, um, and just simply change the file type here to an MPEG video or a Windows Media file. It's not the best way. You don't have quite so much control over the quality of the recording, and you will want it to be a reasonably good quality recording. So here's what I would do. First of all, if you have a newer version of PowerPoint 2016 or above, uh, this is what you can do. So go to File and then head down to Export. Actually, I should just uh, suggest before you do that, save your presentation the ordinary way. So click on the save button at the top or go to file and save. Make sure you have your PowerPoint saved as a PowerPoint, just in case anything were to happen and you were to, to perhaps lose something uh, that you'd recorded. So once you've uh, made sure you've saved your PowerPoint, go to file and come down to export. So you're going to click on export here and then you've got another series of options here. And the one we're going to go for, of course, is create a video. So I'm going to click on create a video. This gives me some other options here. And the first thing to consider is the size and quality. You have four. So obviously if uh, file size is a problem, perhaps you're doing very quick videos and you want to uh, share them through email or something, then standard would be fine. And that probably would work reasonably well for most mobile phones if you were just generally delivering them that way. I wouldn't probably go for that. I would go for at least high definition 720. That's going to be a, a much better quality. And for most of what you're doing, probably certainly for power, uh, for uh, YouTube, if you're uploading it to that, I wouldn't go for anything other than full HD 1080. Um, you could, of course, got to 4K, but I really don't see much point for that for, for what we're doing. Probably for classroom use, I would say full HD is the best one to use. Now, the second option you have here is whether to use the recordings, the narration you've already done um, and the timings that you recorded. Now, it's obviously going to make sense to have those. If you don't have the timings and the narration, then it will automatically, as you see here, put a fixed number of seconds as the timing for each slide. Now, that might work fine if every single slide has the same amount of information on it, but chances are it probably doesn't. So I would either go through, as I did on the first uh, uh, first video in this series, 
and record the narration and the timings as you go through. If you don't want to include narration, that's fine, but at least record the timings so that each slide is up for long enough, because clearly some slides will have just a title on and they don't need to be there for that long. Other slides might have an animation or a more detailed bit of information. So I would at least record the timings if nothing else. So I would use this option here, use recorded timings and narrations. Once you've done that, it's as simple as clicking create video. Um, and that will then take, it depends how long your presentation is. This is only four slides, so it doesn't take very long at all. Um, but once I click that, it will then start to um, well, ask me, first of all, where I want to save it. I'll uh, not do that at the moment because it'll take a, a minute or two. But if you've got a very long presentation, then it could take several minutes for it to process. Now you won't get a progress bar. Um, you won't see anything on the screen that will tell you that it's it's working, uh, that, that's very obvious anyway. Probably the easiest thing to look at is if you look at the file as it appears. So if you saved it to your desktop, for example, have a look at the desktop, you will see a standard icon there while it's still processing. And then when it's finished, that will change to a thumbnail that'll probably be the first slide in your presentation. Then you know it's ready to run. Now, of course, what happens if you have an older version of PowerPoint and you don't have that file export option? Not a problem. Um, what you can do, and this has been done for, for some time in the past, I've done this uh, in the past myself, is to use a little bit of code. Now, don't panic if you've never done code before. I will put this code below this video. So if you're on YouTube, just have a look at the description below. The code will be there, just copy and paste it. There's nothing else you need to worry about. So there's no typing involved. Uh, so we're going to simply copy all of this exactly as it is there. And then in PowerPoint, we're going to go into the code window. Now to do that, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard. So that's the ALT key to the left of the space bar, hold down Alt and then tap the F11 key at the top of your keyboard. And this will open up the code window like this. Now we need somewhere to paste that code. So the first thing we have to do is on the left hand side where we have this um, PowerPoint narration, that's just the name of the, the PowerPoint file that I've got there. Uh, right click on that and insert a module. So right click, insert and module. That just simply gives us a document that we can uh, type into and either write code or in our case, paste code. So simply gonna paste that code in there, that's it. And now we can simply close the code window. That's it, you've done the code. Um, so how do you run that code and what does that code do? Well, the code, if I just show you this here, the code will take your documents folder or your, your user profile rather, sorry, find your desktop and then save it using this file name, PPT video. So the file at the, the end of this will be called PPT video and it'll be on your desktop. If you wanted to change the desktop location to your documents folder or a particular folder, or you want to change the name of the file, that's fine. Just make sure you include all these backslashes and don't delete the .wmv at the end. Uh, this option here is to make sure that the timings and the narration are included. Uh, the vertical resolution 1080, so we've got this as, as high definition basically, 25 frames per second, quality 100%, and that's it. Um, and the name of this uh, bit of code here is called Create HD Video. So now you've copied that code into the code window, you're ready to run it. How do you run it? Very simply, go to the View menu, and on the right hand side, you'll see macros. Click macros and there you can see the macro that we have just created or put in there. Select it and then click run. Again, I'm not gonna do that because it will take a couple of minutes to run this. But once you click run, uh, then you won't get a save box popping up because it's already told where to put that and what to call it. Um, you'll just simply see that file appearing on your desktop. It might possibly take a few minutes. It might take several minutes. If your video includes animations, if your, sorry, if your PowerPoint includes animations or it includes video files or a lot of narration or it's very long, yes, it could take quite a long time for it to, uh, to render, for it to produce. So perhaps if it is a big file, do it in the evening, leave it running overnight or something. Um, I did um, both these methods earlier on 
So these actually are the two exported versions I did earlier. Uh, this one is using the file export method um, and this is using the uh, macro method. Um, and uh, if you're interested at all, you can see there's very little difference between them. There is a slight uh, bit of difference. For example, the exported one is a slightly higher file size. The macro is a slightly smaller file size. Um, you can also see in the details, there's a slight difference in the bit rate, uh, slightly lower in the uh, macro, but a slightly higher bit rate for the audio. But to be honest, there's very little. I think uh, you'd be hard pressed to see any difference at the end. So it doesn't really matter which method you use. Um, there we are. So once you've got the video file, of course, if you have a YouTube account, then you can simply uh, go onto YouTube um, and upload that video so that you've uh, got a link that you can share with your students. Um, if you do upload it to YouTube, of course, you don't have to make the video public if you don't want to. You can simply have it either as unlisted, which means no one will see it unless they've got the link. Um, and so only the people you give the link to will be able to find it. But of course, they could potentially share it themselves. So you can also list a video as private, which means that the only people who are going to be able to see it are people whose email addresses you have uh, included, and they will only see it if they're logged in to, um, to YouTube to uh, with that email address. So if you have a school Google account, for instance, then uh, they'll need to log in using their school Google account, go onto YouTube and look at the video that way. Um, so there we are, that's it. If um, you found that useful, if that was useful to you, please do give this video uh, a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then do so, please, um, because then you will know exactly when more of these videos um, will be coming out, particularly during the current uh, time. Uh, I'm producing a lot more videos and support materials there for uh, particularly teachers. Uh, people who are working remotely. Uh, so if you click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell, then you will know exactly when new videos have come out. Uh, if you have any questions at all, any suggestions or comments, do leave them below. I do try and respond to all comments as quickly as I can, and I do read all comments straight away. Uh, so do leave a comment below. Otherwise, thank you very much indeed for watching. I will see you in the next video when we're going to look at how to create a full website of resources using nothing more than Google and not a penny spent. So I'll see you in that video. Bye for now.